first, thank you very much for this uh, opportunity, and it is an honor for me to talk here with you and every other speaker because, um, well, I'm from Indonesia, and Indonesia is a, a quite a far country from, from India, sure. Um, I will show you first. Um, I come from Samarinda, and so Samarinda is around here. Uh, in the center of Indonesia. Um, I'll talk about um, uh, how we perform uh, retrograde intrarenal surgery in Samarinda. First, we do it in 2014. Per year, we perform around 400 uh, rears per year. We use the Lemonis 100 watt. First, we use the wall fiber scope, and we use access seat from the start because at that time, uh, we find it very difficult to insert the flexible urethroscope without the access seat. The first flexible urethroscope lasted for only 10 procedures. It was broken because I forced flexed it inside the renal calis. But we are very lucky the hospital can provide us the new one. Uh, we, now we use the Olympus and also uh, the Wolf and also the disposable flexible urethroscope for teaching purposes and backup. Uh, the Olympus flexible urethroscope has a small defect after a 320 procedure gets repaired and we can still use it until now. And at the beginning, we use it for all our renal stone because we don't have ESWL in, in Indonesia and in, in my city, I mean in my hospital. But now we only use it for, for small stones, smaller than four centimeters with the hardness less than a thousand Hosfield unit. And this is our, uh, our flexible urethroscope that we use right now. This is the, uh, the settings. I mean, this is the things that we use now. Um, uh, I really love to use the 365 um, fiber because it can give a bigger power so I can finish the job faster. Uh, we also perform supine BCNL and uh, ESIRS for the renal stone management. For big renal stone, for complete sacral stone, we will perform supine PCNL and ACRS for complex stones. And this is the indication. I will uh, uh, sh show you about the recommendation in the AUA. It is for the stone, renal stone, more than 20 millimeters, the first line is PCNL. And in EAU, also the first line is PCNL. Um, but in the EAU guideline, URS, that's the flexible urethroscopy also, is included for the second line. And the lower pole for the more than 20 millimeter stones, also the rears becomes the second line. Some patients choose to underwent uh, rears instead of PCNL. Um, this is a quick review of how we do it. Um, we like to do brushing with the highest frequency possible with very low power and also drilling with the high frequency possible to the highest pi of up and popcorning with the low frequency and the high power. And I will show you the case. I think uh, Finit have seen this case also because this is interesting. A male 50 years old um, come to the clinic with chief complaint of the pain in the right flank and the NCCT showed a red renal stone from PLM to the lower pole 3.8 centimeters in the longest part, 765 Hosfield unit. Uh, this is the stone, a very nice stone. And the choices are PZNL, RIRS, ACRS, and open surgery. Um, in my hospital, uh, we have four urologists and we have a commitment that we don't do open surgery for stone unless it is very, 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 uh, complex stone. And for this stone, what shall we do? Well, 
at this tone, I use a retrograde internal surgery with my flexible uteroscope. And I remember uh, doing this for about one and a half uh, hours. And this is the after the procedure. This is when we do it. You see, uh, this is in the pelum. We use the semi-rigid ureteroscope first. Okay, now I'll talk about the key points of doing it uh, in my place. Uh, we have to use the appropriate device and we have to use the appropriate settings. I will always use ureteral access seat in big stones like this. I always use the semi-rigid ureteroscope first. We'll talk about it later. And irrigate using saline, using syringe. I don't use the, uh, the irrigation devices because I believe that uh, my nurse's hands are very, very capable of giving the view that I need. And patience. I think that's one of um, the key points. Okay, use the appropriate device. I use the 100 watt. Uh, homeum laser from the maze and uh, labor instead of the smaller ones because it can deliver much more bigger, much bigger energy. Well, we see that um, the smaller uh, laser fiber like the 220 microns, it can, it can only deliver um, about 30 watts of energy and I need bigger energy than that. So I, I prefer to use the uh, bigger fiber. And well, this is a, a, a very important tip. Make sure your blast shield is in good condition. Well, in every uh, holmium laser uh, device, they have the blast shield to protect the laser from, from, from firing back to itself. And after some use, the blast shield will become uh, worse, will become darker, and, and, and if you have a bad blast shield, then you will ruin your uh, machine, you will ruin your fiber. It will cost you a fortune. So make sure your blast shield is in good condition. Like this, we have the big power, so we can do it very fast. Okay, use the appropriate settings. The bigger the power, the fast the laser fiber out. Well, of course. And the higher the frequency, the faster the work done. That's why I love to do, to do it in, in, in a high frequency. I usually do the dusting 0 0.2, 0 0.4 joule with 50 hertz and drilling with 0 0.8, 1.4. Uh, with 40 to 50 hertz and drilling and popcorning uh, around 1.4 joule and 30 hertz. And I always use urethral access seat for this. Why? because it's going to be quite a long procedure. Well, I actually um, ha limits my procedure in, in retrograde internal surgery to one to two hours, depending on the patients, because if it's more than that, then we will have more complications. And if I predict the surgery will be longer, I will always use the urethral exit seat. And your retro access seat will, will keep your flexible retroscope alive for a longer time. Uh, the ureteral access seat is very useful if you need to use the basket frequently. But the downside is sometimes pre-stenting is needed. In my place, uh, we do pre-stenting in around 40% of the patient right now because we cannot insert the ureteral access seat at the first attempt. When we cannot insert the ureteral access seat for the first attempt, uh, I, I don't do the dilatation of the ureter, but I will just insert the digestant and will, 
I will come back two to four weeks after that. And also there's a risk of urethral injury. But if you do it smoothly, we can we can we can do it very safe. Ah, and I always use the semi-rigid urethroscope first. Use it the, to break the visible part of the stone in the pielum, and this will keep our flexible urethroscope, which is an expensive one, healthy for a longer time. We can use a small semi-rigid urethroscope inside an exercise to keep the intrarenal pressure low. That's very important. Like this, we can see that, um, well, this is the, 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 the pielum, and this is the kidney, this is a stone. When, when we use the rigid, semi-rigid retroscope, we will do this part first. We will do this part first with the uh, semi-rigid retroscope, and we will do this part using the flexible retroscope. So uh, it will keep the flexible retroscope working longer. I remember, I think if you need, or if you, need you still uh, remember when I show this picture when, when in, in, in Penang, I think, um, Henry um, comment about this yoga position of the table urethroscope, yes. Um, to achieve this, we need to do the uh, passive deflection. So we can put uh, our access seat and push it along with the uh, flexible urethroscope. Uh, we can see here there is a passive part that, that, that can be deflect and the active part. Mm, many of the, the urologists that use the flexible retroscope only think about the active deflection part and it will limit your access. If we think about the passive deflection, deflection part also, you can reach difficult position of the stones the passive position here. And patience. Well, I, well, I can feel that if we do PCNL, we can do it very fast. Take the stones, then uh, it's done. But uh, retrograde internal surgery is actually, for me, it's a kind of art. Art in sense of we do it smoothly, we have to do it patiently, and we will love the results. So uh, my second message is uh, patient selection, like the first, uh, the, the, early, uh, uh, the early slides that I given, the patient selection is very important. If, if the, the, the stone is harder that, than, than 1,000 hospital unit, don't do it. Use PCNL instead and uh, do it with a semi-rigid retroscope until it is impossible to break the stone using it. Then use the urethral access seat so you can work in longer time and keep the kidney safe because the intrarenal pressure will be uh, kept low. And use the appropriate setting from brushing, drilling, popcorning, and be patient. Again, be patient. This is uh, uh, an art. You see, this is the stone, and we do the RRS into that retrograde internal surgery, and this is the final outcome. And I'll show you one, one more. This is a bit smaller than, than the, the previous stone. This is an old lady. I think she's, she was 70 years old, an old lady. And we also perform retrograde internal surgery to her. And I like to show this because if you see this, you will see, uh, we, we will say this is residual stone. No, because after four weeks, this is to be that. See? It's not residual. It will flush. It will be flushed. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm honored. Thank you for it.